Hey is a number of questions that the Gemara has in Halacha, and the Gemara tries to resolve them from the mission that we just learned on the previous staff. And these questions all relate to a woman who is a veris al das, that she violates certain principles that she's supposed to be sticking to, principles of tzniyas, what we call the das yehudis she violates, and a woman who is alone with another man in a situation where it's not an iser. Da'iraisa is classifies as this. She violates, she's an averis al das. So the Gemara's first question is, in averis al das, we know that halacha is that she loses her ksuba. Does she have a right to be warned before she loses her ksuba? To be told, hey, don't do that because you can lose your ksuba? Or is it automatic she does not need the warning? Do we have a possibility that she'll actually change her ways if we warn her? So that's Gemara's question. So it says, if you look at our Mishnah, you could prove it. And we're going to try three attempts at proving that from the Mishnah before we finally settle on it. So the first is that the Mishnah says that in Arusa and Shemaras Yavam, don't drink the Sota water. And they also don't get their Ksuba. Now, why the the implication is that they don't drink the soda water, but they do have kina. They should be warned. So you see that they should be warned. Now, what are we warning them for? If they can't drink the soda water, what's the point of the warning? So the Gemara wants to say it must be because they're about to lose their ksuba. They can't drink the water, but they will lose the ksuba. So the warning is to tell them you're going to lose your ksuba. So you see that in Avera Sadas, because that's what she is. She's in Avera Sadas. She gets a warning before she loses her ksuba. So the Gemara tries to answer this. Abaya says, no, that's not what she is being warned for. She's not being warned she's going to lose Aksuba. She's being warned that she's going to become us to her husband, because that is going to happen, since she can't drink the water. But you don't, so there's a warning to us or a woman to her husband, but there's no warning necessarily that she's going to lose Aksuba. Rav Papa says, no, the warning is because she is going to drink the soda water. She's not going to drink it while she's in Arusa or Shemar Siyafim, but if she goes ahead and she marries the guy, and then she has stira, then she will uh, drink the soda water. And that's what the warning is for. And to support that, among Zerbaisa, that says, an Arusa and a Shemar Siyafim can't drink the soda water while they're in Arusa or Shemar Siyafim. But if they do do kini at that point, and then they get married, then they can drink the soda water. Now, Rava has a different proof from the Mishnah. His proof is from later, where it says that in Amana Meritu Kohen Gadol, Gushach Halutsu to Kohen Hedyet, Mamzeres Nesin Ati Yisrael, Abbas Yisrael to Mamzeru Nesin, also cannot drink soda water, and they lose their ksuba. And the reason is because they're forbidden to stay married to these people, it's what we call any rule of Kaima. So the Gemara says, so again, the implication is that she doesn't drink the soda water, but there is kinoi, there is a warning. And what's the warning for if she can't drink the water? Again, it cannot be, so again, it must be because there's an Iser, but she's going to lose her ksuba. And now you can't tell me, no, that the reason is because she's going to become us to her husband, because she's already us to her husband. So Rabbi Yehuda has an answer anyway. The more says, Rabbi Yehuda, this guy that says, no, it's to ask her to the bowl, because we know that halacha is that when she becomes a sauta, she has kinoi, she becomes us, or not only to her husband, but if she were to get divorced from him at some point, she would be us to the person that she was warned against. Now the Gemara brings its third right, and this one is going to last. It's from Hanina Bisura, and he has a Brysa. The Brysa says that these are the following people that Bazin can do the Kine for if the husband becomes a Cheresh or becomes a Shota, or if he's locked in prison. And again, you cannot, like our Mishnah said, you cannot make her drink the Sota water based on such a Kine, but you can possible her from her Ksuba. So see, it says clearly that the warning is to, is to warn her that she's going to lose her ksuba. So it says it there straight out. So the Gemara says, wow, that's a pretty straight out proof. Why didn't we just bring that proof in the beginning? Why do all the other ones not like that proof? So the Gemara says they would have said that in a situation like this, you warn her because her husband's not really around. And therefore, it makes sense that she's a little bit loose. And if you warn her, then she'll straighten out. However, that does not prove that in a situation where the husband's there and she's playing games anyway, that there's a point in issuing a warning. The Gemara now asks another shayla. What about a husband whose woman is in Averis Haldas, but he wants to be Michael, he wants to give her a ksuba anyway? Does he have a right to give her that ksuba and to be Michael the misbehavior that she has? So the Gemara says the Tutsa the Mar. The terror seems to make it dependent on the husband's minding, the fact that he's upset about it, but if he doesn't care, he doesn't care. 
Or do you say that since initially he had a problem with it, it remains a problem, and if he wants to change his mind afterwards, he can't? So the Gemara brings a proof from the Brisa, from the Mishnah. The Mishnah said that the Beisdin can create a Kinoi for one where the husband is a Cherish, or is a Shoto, or is locked in prison. So the question is, if the husband wants to stay married to her and he wants to keep her, why could the Beisdin go ahead and do the Kinoi if it's possible that the husband doesn't want that? So the Gemara answers, that's not a proof. Because generally, the husband wants, and therefore the person has the right to assume it and um, create the kine for him. Now the Gemara has another similar shayla. So the Gemara says, what if the husband does a kine and he creates the warning on his wife? And now he wants to track back. He wants to be moichel the kine. Can he be moichel it? Because it was dependent on his kine. Now he wants to withdraw it. Or, you say, once he did the kino, you cannot withdraw it. And the Gemara's assumption is this question applies even after the stira. Even after the stira, we still have a possibility that he could withdraw it. So again, the Gemara tries to bring a similar proof to before. The Gemara wants to say, we say that the, the, the basin can do the kino for him. So the Gemara asks... The basin can do the kiri uh, for a cherish for a shaita for a woman whose husband is locked in jail. If the husband has a right to be Michael the kinoi, how can we do a situation where the basin will do something? The husband will go ahead and cancel. It's a zilul on the basin to create something that's canceled by the husband afterwards. Of says that's not a kasha. General assumption: generally, the basin, the the husband's going to go along with the basin will do. So you don't have to be afraid he's going to cancel it. Umar has another proof. We say that we have two Tabir Chachamim that accompany the man and his wife from the local based in on the way to the Sanhedrin. And the reason is that he shouldn't be Baal her. So the problem is, if he could just be Mochel, so what does it help to have two Tabir Chachamim? We're worried about the B on the way. We'll just do a Mechila. Those Tabir Chachamim aren't going to change anything. So the Gemara says, no, the two Chachamim are there in order to teach him that he knows the Halacha, that if he wants to do a Bia, he has to be a Mechel her first. But yes, if he does the mechil, it's going to work. So Umar has another improved because Rabbi Shai said that Zi'ira told me three things from the Anche Yerushalayim. Number one, that a husband who is machal on his kino, the kino is machal. Number two, a zakin mamre, an elder, a tamachacham who rebels against the bezin who is supposed to get skila. The bezin can be mochal that. They can be mochal because it's their covet. And the third thing is that if it's Sarah Morer, the parents could be mochal him and withdraw the punishment that he's meant to get. So this is all the things that Rishai said for that he heard from Zeira. Then he says, when I came to my chaveri, my colleagues, in the south, they agreed to me about two of them, but about the Zakin Mamre, the elder who rebelled against the Sanhedrin, they did not agree. And the reason is, in order that you not have more mechlokas in Yisrael, not have different opinions in halacha, let it be clear what the halacha is. So you see clearly from this entire exchange that the Baal could be Michael on his kinoi. He said it straight out. And his kinoi is Michael, and you see from here. Okay, now the Gemara introduces another mechlokas. This is between Rav Acha and Rav Yino. Is this before Stira or after Stira? This mechila that he could do, is it only before Sira or even after Sira he could do this uh, mechila? So the Gemara says it's logical according to the one that says that the mechila can only be before the Sira and not after this, and not after the Sira. Where do you see that? From what the Rabbanon answered, Rabbi Yaisi. What's that referring to? There's a Brisa where Rabbi Yaisi says that a woman's husband is believed Based on a kavchayim, that means he's trusted to be with her on the way from on uh, from after this stira on the way to Yerushalayim. He's trusted to be with her, and there was melchayim Rabbi Yaisi and Chachamim about that. And Rabbi Yaisi said he's trusted because just like he's trusted if she's in nida, he's trusted if they have this iser of saita on them as well. Uh, and certainly, Nida is Bukharis, and the husband's trusted um, in the face of that severe Isser. So, in the case of Saita, where something love, he should certainly be trusted. But they responded to him, no, because in Nida has a Heter. There's not such a strong desire to violate the Isser because there's a Heter after she cleans up and she goes to the Mikvah. 
However, a sota has no heter, it's going to be also forever. So this is my ask, hold on a second. If he could be Michael, so it's not also forever. So it must be that there is no mechila. And that is clearly shown in the fact that we call a sota that there's no future heter. And that, therefore, we're supporting that position and that opinion. Okay. We went on first back to the Mishnah where we had a mahalakas between Meitil and Beishamai. What is the halacha if the husband dies before they get a chance to drink the sota water? Does she collect her ksuba or not? So, what's this mahalakas about? So, you want to say mahalakas is over the concept of Sharha Meligwas Kigavoi. Tell me, when you have money that's owed, you have a person who owes money to someone, is it considered that's collected? And therefore, that person who's owed the money, it's like he's already holding the land. And if the woman wants to collect her ksuba, she has to prove that she's owed it. Or do you say it's not considered collected and she doesn't have to prove that she's owed it? He has to prove that she's not owed it. And therefore, the situation will be the inheritors who has to bring the burden of proof to prove that she doesn't collect her ksuba or that she collects her ksuba. And that's Mechog is on base Shammai, who's the muhsik here in a situation like this. Next, the Gemara moves on to the concept of a man whose wife is pregnant with someone else's child. Do you have a Sota Parsha there? We had a Mechogas. Based on, it, could he just marry someone else or not? So the Gemara quotes of Nachman in the name of Rabbi Barbua, who wants to say that this whole Mechogas is about an Akara and a Zakena, where there is no, <coughs> where she is a woman who theoretically is childbearing. Nakara is childbearing, she just hasn't had a child yet. And Zikena is childbearing, she's just too old at this point. However, an islandess who's not a childbearing woman at all, the nature of her body is that it's not childbearing, it's a syndrome that's been seen before. So everyone agrees that there is no Parsha of Sot on her. The Parsha of Sot is only said by a woman who's Roy Leilid, because it says of an Ixam in Israel Zera that if she was innocent, she will have a child. An islandist could ever have a child. And therefore, this parsha is not referring to her at all. So the Gemara has a number of kashas on this, which we will see on the next half.